Hi everyone, welcome back to Splash Page. I'm Sean, and as always, I'm joined by Andrew, and today hey. we're going to be going over what happened in Season 3, Episode 4 of The Boys. Andrew, what did you think of the episode? Dildo fight! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Dildo, sorry. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we know where your mind immediately went. Oh my uh, god, this was such a fun episode. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> very lock stuck into smoking barrels. Yeah. Um, so let's jump in. Episode starts with Huey accusing Butcher of using Compound V solely because Butcher puked on him and has a little bit of a hangover. But he is correct. Uh, yeah. And so right off the bat, Andrew, did you think that Huey was going to take Compound V as we learn in the end of the episode he does? Ah, uh, well, there was the moment where but he asked for it from Butcher, was begging for it from Butcher. He's tired of feeling so useless. And Butcher actually said, no, I'm not giving it to you, which from what I understand, I haven't read him, is the opposite of what happened in the comics. Yeah, Butcher just stabs him with it. Yeah. Asking, so really. I kind of like that. And then once he took it, it made sense and it was a surprise. But at the same time, I'm a little upset that everyone's just got superpowers now, but at the same time, it is fun to see the back and forth of Butcher, who has him and doesn't want him, and now Huey, who has him and really wants him. Yeah. So it'll be fun to see where that goes. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get more on that topic when we talk kind of the end of the episode. But then we see kind of this back and forth between Homelander and, you know, the news or the media, completely fear-mongering, and that leads Stan Edgar to go to Victoria Newman, um, and say, like, something needs to be said about Homelander, which she is not too keen on. Yeah, uh, she's afraid of him, and rightly so. Yeah, Homelander obviously is stronger than anyone else. And to be honest, if Newman could blow up Homelander's head, I feel like she would. She probably knows where she fits on the scale of superheroes or the ladder of right. superheroes and knows that she is not strong enough to take out Homelander by herself. Which was interesting because actually... Edgar told her, told Homelander, yeah, I get it. She's, I taught her to play all the sides. But all the sides that she's playing, she's playing along with Edgar until she's on stage. And then she turns on Edgar and so gives Homelander the credit for turning him in, in to get a vial of that compound V for her daughter, we find out. But she got it from Homelander, so who knows... I don't know. Who, she's just trusting and not trusting everyone at the same time. It almost seems like her plan is a little bit like... Yeah, it's it's scary that she trusts Homelander enough to give her a clean version of Compound V. And it's even scarier that she is using that Compound V to inject her daughter. And yeah. therefore her daughter stands a chance to survive or thrive or not be killed by Homelander. Again, pointing to me that she's not strong enough to take out Homelander. We go in a little bit further and uh, we have our friend A-Train who speaks up at the end of a meeting asking to have the Seven do something about Blue Hawk. Uh, Blue yeah. Hawk is the soup who is patrolling Trenton and has been kind of overly policing or killing unnecessarily um, African Americans and minorities in that area. And, you know, based on A-Train talking to his brother, he wants to do something about it. The Deep chimes in. Homelander sides with the Deep, uh, and they kind of end that conversation, leading to a little bit of a scuffle in the hallway between the Deep and A-Train. Homelander breaks it up. Obviously, it's seen at that moment that A-Train is very much on the outside looking in, and that the Deep is now seen as a higher-ranking person in the Seven. So Supersonic pulls A-Train aside and lets him in on the information that Annie and Maeve are working on a way to kind of stop and kill Homelander. Immediately to me, this rang bells of, uh oh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> because A-Train, if anything else, just wants to be on the Seven and wants to be seen as a superhero. Continue making money, continue being thought yeah. of very highly. And he's going to sell you up the river every time. Yeah, I didn't see it coming, but it made sense character-wise. To go back a minute, I love that whole character development with the Deep, too. Because he didn't stand up to Homelander until his wife texted him something mm. to stand yeah. up to Homelander. Which he did. And like I said in the first three-episode recap, the Deep is a mush. He never does anything right. He screws everything up. And I said it would be fun to see when he finally stands up and screws it up. And this episode, he stood up to A Train at least. Like the two of them had a had a couple words with each other, and he ended up coming out on top. So I guess that's the one time he's he's getting his confidence back. 
Yeah, and he obviously has a, a great person kind of pulling the strings. Now, great I'm using in the terms of smart and calculated. Great for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a, a little other Easter egg in this storyline was that Maeve has been faking being an alcoholic and a drunk. and She's playing you know, the media game. Exactly. And, and that she stopped training, but really she's training extra hard and she is completely sober because her intent... Um, as we know by giving Butcher the compound, or sorry, the V24, is that she wants Homelander dead. Yeah. And the only way to do that is for her to be on top of her game. There's a scene where she is working out and training with a sword. And in the comic, that has a very specific payoff in the end, which I won't spoil here. But I'm very curious to see if we get that scene and even potentially this season. Knowing that there will be a fourth season because this yeah. is, oh. the boys has officially been greenlit for season four. So, All right. Yep. So there's more to come, more boys to come. We know we're not going to get some kind of apocalyptic so ending. So many this more season. boys. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I'm not shocked. This show is absolutely insane, and people are loving it. So I even Peta, Peta reached out and said that they love the boys' show because they didn't <laughs> use a real octopus. They use CGI <laughs> for Timothy. Swear to wow. God, I saw Peter that. Has, Peter has a low bar anymore. <laughs> yeah, Peter very rarely says positive things yeah. uh, about anything. And they came out and said that the Timothy, the Timothy Octopus character being yeah. CGI was awesome. So, you know, everyone yeah. loves this show. Peter loves this show. Everyone loves this show. <laughs> well, I mean, this show, I don't know how they're going to do a fourth season after we started the series blowing up an invisible man from the inside, we started this season blowing up a man through his penis. And then we, this episode with the giant dildo fight with Kamiko, where are we yeah. going from here? How does it get bigger? And yet they continue to do so. Yeah. Just I mean, awful, I guess we'll just... crazy, cartoonish, Tarantino level gore. Yeah, we'll just have to wait with bated breath on how yeah. they're going to do it. And we still have four more episodes, I believe, yeah. this year. So plenty more to happen. And unfortunately, we do have a very sad ending for Supersonic as it turns out A-Train does betray him to Homelander. Homelander then kills Supersonic on a rooftop and brings Starlight to see his ripped up body. To glow. And, uh, absolutely to glow. Yeah. And tells uh, Starlight that if she ever plots against him again, that that will be Huey. Yeah, he is. He's off the rails. He's unstoppable. And last episode of our show, I said that I saw a member of the Seven getting killed off for the end of the season. Supersonic is not who I meant. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to take credit for getting that theory right. Uh, he was by far though. the easiest one. But technically, technically. check mark in my corner. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's get to the crux of the episode with the boys who talk and negotiate with little Nina to get over to Russia and get the information that she has on where Soldier Boy is. They go over and to the opening of this episode, Kamiko is picked as the person who's going to go in and do this hit as she has done many hits before. Uh, but you could tell that this one affects her more. She certainly yeah. does not want to be a killing machine anymore. And we know that in her conversations earlier this season with Homelander's son, she says she hates her powers and wishes she didn't have them. It's starting to grate on her. The powers are only being used for death and that she's being used by Butcher and told what to do. And she doesn't really have a say in it anymore. She's not happy with it. And it's starting to turn. Mm -hmm. so. And, you know, she goes in to some kind of orgy scene with some ladies of the night and they open up the cabinet in which there are. Fancy Plastic phallics for uh, each one of the seven, which yeah. I thought was hilarious. And they're used in combat. One little spoiler from the comic, and so this is a legit spoiler potentially for this season, but I think this is more a nod to it than it would be something they follow here. But uh, little Nina is actually killed off because Butcher puts a bomb in a vibrator that she uses oh. on her private jet. And the jet blows up in the air when she goes to use it. <laughs> so, little funny nod to the fact right. that, you know, we're seeing all of these things and that's how they kill her in the comics. But they get over to Russia. They go to this lab. And Frenchie notices a little a little glass uh, tank that a hamster named, I believe they said the name was Jamie, yeah, that is right. in. 
and Jamie is kind of walking around. They think it's adorable, and obviously it is filled with compound V, so it's flying around, breaking the glass, which alerts guards to run in, and then the hamster Jamie actually breaks out and just straight up murders one of the guards. It saves Frenchie's life. I don't know if yeah. the hamster was taking sides or if just attacking whoever was closest. But he definitely burrowed right through that guy's eye into his head. And then we get kind of the climactic scene where Butcher reveals that he's been he's taken Compound Twenty Four and gets shot up a bunch. Goes kills the rest of the guards. Super Butcher. Yep, and everyone's pissed, specifically Mother's Milk. And then the guard gets a jump on Mother's Milk. And then Huey proves that his V Twenty Four that he stole from Butcher allows him to have super speed. And he basically runs through the guy or punches through the guy. Did he like, run uh, there, or I, I saw that as a teleportation? So, no, he, I. Oh, that's interesting. I thought he yeah. sprinted there, blowing his clothes off. Because I thought um, he teleported. That's why the clothing stayed behind. He teleported out of his clothing. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out next episode yeah. to see if they make that clearer. I, I took it as he ran so fast he blew his clothes off. But teleportation totally works as well. And then he punched a hole through the guard, which was very yeah. invincible with uh, Omni Man punching through the immortal. Yeah, and. I hate to be the guy that says it, but this also happens in the comic. The first time Huey gets in a fight after being injected with Compound V is with a small group of soups, and he ends up accidentally punching through a soup because he gotcha. doesn't know how strong he is. So yeah, that was a huge moment, and Mother's Milk is basically saying that he doesn't think Butcher should have taken it, which I kind of called. Yeah, so now M.M. is pissed at Butcher, M.M. is pissed at Huey, Butcher is pissed at Huey, Huey's mm-hmm. kind of oblivious high kind of yeah, Frenchie and Kamiko are both kind of pissed at everyone. And then Butcher does the, the big act of the episode where he finds the capsule, uh, rips off the door and that's where soldier boy is. Yeah. Um, who appears to have been in there for several years. Now, obviously if he was abducted in the eighties, it would have been like 40 years. His beard was probably like a one year beard, but <laughs> you know, maybe he's been taken out a few times or cleaned up a few times. Yeah. Regardless, Without much thought or a word or anything, he uses this chest beam and shoots it at Frenchie, who is knocked out of the way by Kamiko. Kamiko goes flying, and some kind of metal rod from the wall is sticking through her. And for some reason, her healing powers aren't working. Yeah, so you said you think it might be because the rod is in her chest, is if they pull that out, she'll heal? Or do you think it's something internal to that magic beam he's the weapon that can kill homelander i think it's just take out kamiko i think it's the latter obviously the thing that would kill her is the beam through her that metal rod through her right but the reason why she's not healing isn't because there's something in her i mean she was shot with a bullet through the head and bullet basically came back out so i think this has certainly something to do with whatever beam she was hit yeah so now we've found our secret weapon and it's a guy (laughs) <laughs> it's a guy it's with Jens, a chest beam. It's Jensen Ackles. <laughs> He's got a chest beam. Great. So, well, that, I mean, that's everything I caught. Uh, Andrew, any last thoughts on episode four? No, this is a very good episode. And again, like the first three were kind of bigger explosions. There was the giant fight at the oligarchs here. But this is more of a let's move the story forward. Let's get Soldier Boy out of confinement. So there we go. He is back in the show. He's alive, which he had to be, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so he's I, back, he's alive, and we still don't know because he came in in the last scene where his head is at. He might mm-hmm. not even know because he just came back to life right. after 40 years. But we'll, we still got to wait to see. That's what I'm looking forward to. Does he side with Vought? Does he side with the boys? Does he side with himself? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. I think this episode was a great episode to kind of shift the, the paradigm in the show a little bit to give us like basically a, a fresh slate of things to look forward to for the next four episodes. Yeah. Stan Edgar losing power, huge moment that obviously was in place since episode one, season one. Yeah. Um, you know, losing another member of the seven, the boys having powers and being able to utilize them a bit, the, you know, big division within the boys and who wants to do what moving forward. All of these things are awesome and certainly going to give us a lot new, a lot of new storylines going forward. So, two very enthusiastic thumbs up from my end on this episode. Yeah, I fully Great. agreed. We are giving away two toys. The first is a Vax toy, and the second is a Percy toy. And we will be giving them away once we hit 2,500 subscribers. That's it from us. 
please like and subscribe to our channel and this video. It certainly helps get these around. And I'm Sean. That's Andrew. Take it easy, YouTube. Later.